In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, we are in the fifth week after the celebration of the risen Lord, and we are on the first day, Monday of this present week. The readings of the day taken from the Acts of the Apostles and from the Gospel of John remind us of our faithfulness and commitment to the risen Lord and to His mission. As we come around this altar of sacrifice, let's recall to mind our sins and ask the Lord for His pardon and compassion. I confess to, to Almighty God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault. Through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Because he was the chief speaker, they called Hermas. 
And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was in front of the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates and wanted to offer sacrifice with the people. But when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of it, they tore their garments and rushed out to among the multitude, crying, Men, why are you doing this? We also are men of like nature with you, and bring you good news that you should turn from these vain things to a living God, who made the heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all the nations to walk in their own ways. Yet, he did not leave himself without witness, for he did good and gave you from heaven rains and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. With these words, they scarcely restrained the people from offering sacrifice to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response. Not to us, Lord, but to your name, give the glory. Not to us, Lord, but to your name, give the glory. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name, give the glory, for the sake of your love and your truth, lest the heaven say, Where is their God? Your response? Not to us, Lord, but to your name, give the glory. But our God, He is in the heavens. He does whatever He wills. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. Your response? Not to us, Lord, but to your name, give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth He has given to men. Your response? Not to us, Lord, but to your name, give the glory. Acclamation. the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance all that I have said to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Gospel narrative this morning is a continuation of 
the conversational language, the dialogue that Jesus had at the Last Supper in the upper room with the, with the twelve disciples. Jesus, at the end of his life, enacts another prophetic act. An act of a prophet, but much more than a prophet, God himself, trying to anticipate the impending suffering that would befall on his shoulders. That he would carry on with the cross on his way to Calvary in order to die for the redemption, to buy back the world to the Father. And therefore Jesus instructs the twelve as to how they have to behave themselves, how they ought to bear witness to the love and to the world. You know, Jesus begins by saying love. The word love often in the modern day culture is often misunderstood or understood in an exaggerated manner. But the love, that divine love that Jesus is making a reference to is always true love calls for action. True love translates itself in small little gestures of concrete, tangent, tangent sensible, sensitive actions. Therefore, when, we, when the Lord says, when you love me, you will do exactly what I have done, what I am going to do, and you will be my disciples. And therefore, the disciples ask him, Lord, why do you only reveal to us the twelve, not to the world? The word, the world here is referring to, Jesus is making a point of reference to, to the disciples, making them aware, saying, the world refers to those people who turn their back against God. Those people who deny God, let's call it those godless fools, those godless men, those godless philosophers who do not see and understand and accept the authorship, the privacy of God in our lives. When we turn our back against God, surely we are denying God, we are betraying Him, we are saying no to God and we are saying yes to ourselves. That's what the Lord is saying. You have to be a little different from. The world will not give me back the love that I am looking for. Whereas you can give, you the disciples who have lived with me for the last three years, you will bear me witness through your actions, gestures of humanity, through your actions of human love, through your actions of the divine love being expressed through your life. And therefore Jesus is saying, forget about the world, think of yourself, you shall be my witnesses. The second point that the evangelist John likes to drive home this morning in the gospel narrative is through the mouth of Jesus himself, the earthly Jesus, the Jesus of history who later became the Christ of faith. And therefore, this Jesus of history, Jesus of Nazareth is telling us, I will give you the counselor in Greek, parakletes or parakletos simply means one who is uh, a lawyer in the court of law, a defense lawyer in the court of law. And what does he do? The defense lawyer in the court of law plays the role of a defendant of the case and argues the case in his favor so that the defendant can make his case. Now, the word paracletus or paracletus or the counselor the Holy Spirit has many other nuances and meanings and shades of uh, beautiful uh, meanings that lie behind this word. Here, Jesus is translating the word counselor, paracletus, as a comforter, support. Just like the lawyer who stands in a court of law to take the case of the accused and stand on his behalf and plead the case, so too the counselor. The Holy Spirit will stand on your behalf. What does He do? The first thing is, He will bring to your memory. He will make you to remember all that I have said, I have done. You see, that's important. God will bring to your memory the past, the present and the future. 
And the Holy Spirit is the main instrument whom I will give after I go up to my father, after I return back to my father. He will bring to your back. He will make the rock. He will surely iron, iron it out. He will surely write straight on crooked lines. He will bring light in darkness. He will make smooth the rough ways. He will give you an eloquence which the none of your adversaries of this world will be able to withstand. And therefore we can go on with enlisting and enumerating a list of things that the Holy Spirit does in the disciples who receives it. But here we have to really ask ourselves whether I am sensitive to the spiritual ignorance that I suffer. See often uh, our mind because of our secular success, secular studies, secular fame and popularity, we tend to forget the all the gifts, the, your beauty, your fame, your popularity, your wealth. All that that you have is not yours. It has been given by the God who is the author of your life. And therefore, when a human mind tends to forget that and concentrate on its own success by its own self, surely we become ignorant of that spiritual doctrine that I am what I am today, it's because of God's will. I am what I am today, it's because of God to my parents has made me to become what I am. That particular attitude of humility, owing everything to God, all that I have is from God, that one we should become more aware. And therefore we should become more sensitive and sensible uh, to become, we should not overlook we should not deny that my life is built on image and likeness of the God who created me in his own likeness and image. And therefore, brothers and sisters, the counselor, the Holy Spirit is going to bring about in us a sort of a spiritual evolution, a sort of a jump, a sort of a qualitative leap in my life from the past to the future. I am going to become a true living witnesses of the risen Lord in this world through my life, through my words, through my look, through my actions. And therefore, if I have to be true to Jesus, the risen Lord, I have to live it out. I have to bear witness to that particular testimony the Lord wants me to become. And therefore, the gospel narrative this morning is very, very powerful in enabling us and in ennobling us. The word to ennoble someone is to make someone noble. To make someone noble in Christian sense means to make someone filled with the grace of the Lord. Not with the things of this world, but the grace that comes from the Holy Spirit, the greatest gift that we can get. Because of which we are all anointed and consecrated right from our sacrament of baptism till the time the Spirit of the Lord continues to guide us and enlighten us. And therefore, as we come around this altar, let's pray the Lord to bless us and guide us on. that this and your sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. May our praise rise up to you, O Father, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. To this, in memory of me. The mist. 
story of faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. We look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the Paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grounded by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Father, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis of Hope, K. A. E. William, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests and deacons, and your entire people, as well we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the Apostles, the Martyrs, and all the saints, we shall praise you and exalt you through your Christ, Jesus Christ, your Son. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Sisters, let's now pray with the confidence of the Father in the words of Saviour Jesus taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Father, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, and peace I give you. Let not no saints, but on the faith of your family gather together. And graciously grant us the your gift of peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace and joy of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold the Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Blessed for spiritual companion. Lord, as the centurion prayed, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We too, with total surrender, pray to you, Lord Jesus, though we are unworthy to receive you into our hearts without considering our limitations. Lord, by your love and blessings, help us to remain faithful to you. Grant us the grace to live as your children, bearing witness to your gospel every day. Help us to live a life according to the will of God, the Father. Come and help us to do your good works. Free us from all danger and protect us from every mishappenings. Fill us with your love and faith. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living Father, you who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Increasing as we pray the fruits of this Paschal sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ.